I know that joy is in my heart. And, and so if we, we can think about that. Um, it's not on. We just turned it on. Is it on now? Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, this is a great piece of music. We believe you're really going to like it. And so I'm going to ask Carol to, to play the, the glory. to God in the highest and on earth peace on earth peace to people of goodwill okay let's everybody sing this time <clears throat> glory to God glory to God glory to God in the highest and on earth on earth peace to people of goodwill. Okay, let's do the introduction and then we'll sing it one more time. Oh. <laughs> glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, on earth peace to people Okay, now the antiphon sung by all after each of the three verses, and after the last verse, we get to sing an amen. So let's all sing the final antiphon with the amen at the end, and it goes like this. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace, to peace. Now, the gospel, alleluia, sounds like this. During our celebration today, these two antiphons will be intoned, and that is it will be sung first by us, uh, first by the cantor, and then we'll bring everybody in. So thank you. Good morning, and welcome to St. Ladislaus Parish, and a special greeting to anyone joining our parish worship today. If you haven't already done so, please be sure to silence your cell phone for the Mass. Thank you. We invite you now to take the moment to greet those seated near you. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Today, the Church is celebrating the liturgy for the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Before Mass begins, we have a few announcements to share with you. St. Ladislaus Social Committee is hosting a clam bake on Friday, October 4th, beginning at 6.30 in Cullen Hall. There are many meal options, including chicken, steak, many sides, and of course, clams. Tickets are on sale today after Mass, or you may contact the parish office. We hope you and your family can attend this fun and delicious event and even bring a friend. 
It's not too late to sign up for the upcoming Bible study course, which begins on Monday. This 10-week class will explore the biblical roots of our Mass with video lectures from Dr. Brian Petrie. You have a choice of joining either the morning sessions or the evening session, and there is no fee. The bulletin has some additional information. We're hoping you might participate. There are several key activities taking place in the next few weeks, including the Way Group Outreach, the conclusion of our No Soul Left Behind initiative, a special announcement from Deacon John, the St. Vincent de Paul Blanket Sunday, and more. Please refer, refer to your bulletin as you exit today. Today at Mass, we will continue our series of video liturgy lessons with Father Douglas Martis. Each lesson is intended to deepen the appreciation and experience of our liturgy. You will find a summary of today's lesson in the Parish Bulletin. And finally, coffee and donuts are being served this morning, courtesy of our Parish Council Committee. We hope you will take a few moments after Mass today to come to the Parish Center and enjoy some fellowship and enjoy refreshments. Presiding at Mass today will be Father John Manning. We repent and put our faith in God as we sing number 635 in your music issue, This Day God Gives Me, number 635. This day God gives me strength of my heaven, sun and moon shining, flame in my heart, flashing of lightning, wind in the swiftness, deeps of the ocean, firmness of earth. This day God sends me Strength is my guardian, might to uphold me, wisdom as guide. Your eyes are watchful, your ears are listening, your lips are speaking, friend at my side. God's way is my way, God's shield is Round me, God's host defends me, saving from ill. Angels of heaven drive from me always. All that would harm me stand by me still. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And please be seated. One can't go too far into a church building without noticing the central feature of the sanctuary, and that is the altar. So what is the significance of the altar? This has to be said clearly. The altar is the most significant, most central symbol in the church building. That's not to say that the tabernacle is not important, but for the celebration of the Mass, the center of all of the liturgical action, in fact, is the altar. We should always think of these three things together. Christ, who is the victim or the sacrifice, Christ himself, who is the priest offering the sacrifice, and Christ himself, who is the altar, the place of sacrifice. We can learn a lot simply from the way that the altar is given this meaning in the rite for the dedication of a church. It says, in essence, that when the ministers come into the church, 
They ignore the altar. The bishop, without kissing the altar, goes to the chair. So you see, at the beginning of the ceremony, the altar is completely ignored. There's no bow, there's no kiss, there's no reverence of the altar at the beginning, because at that moment, the altar is simply an object, a hunk of stone or a chunk of wood. It is only by virtue of the ritual of dedication that, the, that this inanimate object takes on new and permanent meaning. The very first thing that happens to the altar is the sprinkling of water. This is reminiscent of baptism, so there's a kind of washing of the altar. After the sprinkling with holy water is the anointing with the great oil of chrism. The oil is poured on the surface of the altar and rubbed in by the hand of the bishop. After the anointing, there's an incensing of the altar with the smoke rising, symbolizing our prayers rising to heaven. And then there's the covering of the altar with a white cloth, just like the white garment that is given to one who is newly baptized. After the clothing with the white garment, candles are brought, the, the altar is lit. Finally, we go into the celebration of the Eucharist. St. John Chrysostom has this remarkable comment about the celebration of the Eucharist for the first time on the altar. He says this, the altar is an object of wonder. By nature it is stone, but it is made holy after it receives the body of Christ. The parallel to Christian baptism is remarkable. In essence, the altar, like the Christian, is made another Christ. Imagine the altar is washed and anointed and clothed with a white garment and illuminated with candles. And finally, it receives, as John Chrysostom says, the Eucharist for the first time. That is why we bow to the altar. It has become Christ. That is why we incense the altar. The altar is Christ. This altar, far from being an inanimate object, is now the permanent symbol of the presence of Christ for the Christian community. To begin our Mass, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. And you plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace, to people of goodwill. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace. Oh 
Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace, on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One. pray. O oh God, who manifest, look upon us, O oh Lord, who founded the, com the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and our neighbor. Grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Hear this, you who trample upon the needy and destroy the poor of the land. When will the new moon be over, you ask, that we may sell our grain, and the Sabbath, that we may display the wheat? We diminish the ipa, add to the shekel, and fix our scales for cheating. We will buy the lowly for silver and the poor for a pair of sandals. Even the refuse of the wheat we will sell. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, never will I forget a thing they have done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I 
will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised, His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all, and compassionate toward all His works. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. The Lord is just in all His ways and holy in all His works. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him, to all who call upon Him in truth. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be offered for everyone, for kings, and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all. This was the testimony at the proper time. For this, I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth. I am not lying. Teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. It is my wish, then, that in every place the men should pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. The word of the Lord. Lord, your love and 
and grant us your salvation. Grant us your salvation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke now Jesus said to his disciples there was a rich man who had a steward and it was reported to the rich man that the steward was squandering his property the rich man summoned the steward and said to him what is this I hear about you Prepare a full account of your stewardship, because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, what shall I do? Now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me, I'm not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do, so that when I am removed from my stewardship, they may welcome me into, my, into their homes. So he called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, how much do you owe my master? The debtor replied, 100 measures of olive oil. He said to them, here is your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for 50. Then to another the steward said, and you, how much do you owe? He replied, 100 cores of wheat. The steward said to him, here is your promissory note, write one for 80. Now the master commended that dishonest servant for acting prudently. For the children of this world are much more prudent in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. I tell you, make friends for yourselves with dishonest wealth, so that when it fails, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. And the person who is dishonest in very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, Who will trust you with true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No servant can serve two masters. He will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. My brothers and sisters in Christ, everyone likes stories in which the rich and the powerful somehow get it. And that's really at the base of the gospel reading today. Remember that when Jesus was talking and giving examples, these were peasants. They were at the end of the line. And frequently, anyone above them that suffered some disgrace they enjoyed immensely. And so the story really then is not so much about the uh, dishonest steward, but about his cleverness. And scripture scholars say that how we're to understand this is in this way, that the steward realizes that indeed he is on the way out and perhaps might be punished for perhaps some dishonesty. And so he calls in each of the master's debtors and asks them to uh, simply subtract a certain amount. The steward realizes that each of the debtors are going to go out and they're going to praise the the owner for his generosity. Even though they might be having a difficult time, the owner is sort of giving them reprieve. And so at the end of that, 
who wins. The steward wins because it seems like everyone enjoys and, and appreciates his friendship in helping them. The debtors win because the uh, exorbitant rates were reduced. And unfortunately, the rich man, because he was hailed and praised for his generosity, has to swallow the loss. And if you were a peasant at the time, you would really enjoy that. You'd go, oh yes, he got it, good. And there's nothing he can say about it because he doesn't want to lose face. And as we put it that way then, we say we enjoy what they enjoyed. That cleverness, that really sort of overturning what was usually the way it should be and in moving in a different direction. And as we do so, Jesus is saying to us though, think about it. Think about this, such cleverness, such cleverness to hide one's dishonesty. What a waste of God's talent. Indeed, what would it be like to be the children of light and to display the cleverness that those on the other side use? And indeed, how blessed we would be and how better our world would be. And so the parable really has a sense of joy as well as happiness, but there's also a sense of loss, a sense, isn't this a waste, to use this great talent in such a terrible way. And it reminds me of something that happened in, a number of years ago. I had just come from the sem a teaching in the seminary, and I was an associate in a parish, and I was the only priest there. And one day, uh, I get a call from the secretary who says, uh, there's a man out here who wants to uh, see you. He wants to see a priest. So I said, okay. So I went down, and the, the man is there, and, and he's against the wall. And he's staring out, you know, and, uh, and I said, yes, can I help you? And he said, well, I can't tell you my last name, but it's Vincent is my first name. So we walked to my office, and he said, um, Father, I can't be by the window. I have to be on the other side away from the window. And I'm going, what in the world did I get myself into? So he goes on and tells the story. The story is that he is Vinny, and he was sent by his boss, Big Louie, from Chicago to come and whack somebody in Cleveland. Yes, it's like a bad episode of The Sopranos. And, and he goes on and on and on telling how he had this, he just couldn't whack this man. And so then he remembered how when he was growing up in a, a parish in um, Philadelphia, that the man, the priest always said, when you're in trouble, you go to the priest, he'll help you. So there he is, he's telling me all these things, and at one time there's a screech uh, outside the window, and I look around, where is he? Vinny's on the ground. He thought that uh, Big Louie was sending his men to whack him. So what happens is he goes on and on, and he says, you know, Father, I can't go back to Chicago, I'm stuck. And he looks at me, doesn't ask for money. And, and he said, and I, so I, by this time, I knew this was, this was a magnificent con. And so I said, here, I'll give you $20. And he said, oh, oh, only 20? <laughs> and I said, yes, only 20. And so I gave him the money, and lo and behold, big Vin, uh, Vinny, the, Vinny the failed hitman walks out the door. And as I found out later, he hit eight parishes that day. Uh, with that same story. When it was all finished, you know, I, I certainly I told the story over and over again, but what is sad about it is this man was really talented. He could really put on a great act. I gave him $20. I was so entertained. Uh, and, and how sad that was, that this man used these great skills that God had given him simply to do something to con people out of money. And so whenever I, I uh, preach on this uh, gospel today, I think of Vinny the hitman and how indeed, how the peasants must have felt. There's a sense of joy about a wonderful story, but also a sadness. How did uh, one person misuse his talents for something not very good?
We have heard the word of God and reflected on it. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, As we gather together this morning, we know that we have been drawn here by the Spirit. And so, with confidence, let us present our needs to the Father. Hear us, O Lord, as we pray to you. Hear us, O Lord, as we pray. For those who struggle in finding their place in the world because they are different by man's standards, may they find peace in knowing they were created in God's image and likeness. That what is good and pleasing to God manifests itself in our daily lives, for we cannot serve both, the, both God and the things of the world. For the unemployed and the underemployed, that through the generosity of others like the Knights of Columbus, they find their daily needs met and experience hope for a brighter future. As parents and trusted adults, may the innocence of children always be honored, and may all babies have the right to life. For matters of the heart, as we spend a moment in silence to offer our personal petitions to the Lord. For those who strive to end disease and suffering for the sick of our parish, especially Mike Dunham Sr., Pat West, Victoria Hickey, Betty Bennett, Karen O'Boyle, Michelle Smith, Ruth Lewis, Marie Kowalski, Jack Duntilly, Helen Smith, the Nagel Triplets, Evelyn Turk, Emmett Novak, and Brian Owad. And for our beloved dead, Terry Clancy, <coughs> God of mercy, welcome them into the heavenly banquet, especially Rita Marcelco. Hear us, O Lord, as we pray. Lord God, we thank you for the good gifts you have given us, and we pray that you will hear these our needs. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We bring our gifts, singing the song of surrender, number 623 in your music issue, God of the Hungry, number 623. Oh, yo. Yeah. 
are you, Lord God, of all creation. We have this bread to offer, which with this given in human hands and made it will come for us the bread of life. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands who will come from us our spiritual dream. And pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through this heavenly mystery, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our, dis our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation. And so through Christ our Lord, in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you with great joy as we proclaim. Oh, uh -huh. 
are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice again, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with St. Ladislaus, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Nelson our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <laughs> through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Ah. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> uh. 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. As Eucharistic people, we join in the celebration of God's love by singing number 323 in your music issue, Gift of Finest Wheat, number 323. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of 
finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to be. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and need his voice. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. lips we sing to you our praise and gratitude in Christ that you should count us worthy Lord to share this heavenly food you satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat come Christ is not the cup we bless and share, the blood of Christ our Lord. Do not one cup, one loaf declare, our oneness in the Lord. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The mystery of your presence, Lord, no mortal tongue can tell. Whom all the world cannot contain, comes in our hearts to dwell. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O Saviour Christ, the bread of life to eat. You give yourself to us, O Lord, and so let let us be. To serve each other in your name, in truth and charity. Christ, you satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to of Christ. The body 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 of Christ. of Christ. You do it. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. <clears throat>
Let's feel. And we pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our lives. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll ask those bringing communion to the sick to please come forward. You've been called by our community to be Christ bearers to those that are sick, those that are homebound. Please uh, extend to them our prayers as well as our thoughts and our prayers that indeed that their sufferings will be alleviated. God bless. Okay. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I forgot the announcements. Sorry. Uh, most importantly, there's coffee and donuts after this mass. <laughs> and then secondly, there's a, uh, the, the tickets for the clam bake that will be occurring in two weeks uh, are available in the vestibule. And the mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. With faith and thanksgiving, we join in the Song of Christ, number 546 in your music issue, Glory and Praise, number 546. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are Trust in his ways. We, the daughters and sons of him who build the valleys and plains, praise the wonders our God has done in every heart that sings. 
glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his ways. In his wisdom he strengthens us like gold that's tested in fire. Though the power of sin prevails, our God is there to save. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings He bears to those who trust in His way. 